The goal of this video is to show you how to model a simple pendulum. The end goal is to create a pendulum which moves as shown in this video. First, we create a geometry for the pendulum. We'll use a cylindrical geometry. I'm going to work with the hello.xml file. I'll rename this as simple pendulum. I'll open up the Mojoko viewer, drag and drop the simple pendulum file. And we see that the scene which opens up is the block dropdown, which we saw earlier in hello.xml. I'm going to open this file in Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I'll do a couple of things. I'll first turn gravity off. Effect of this is that when you reload, the block doesn't move down. I'm going to get rid of the plane. We put the position as zero, zero, zero. Get rid of the joint. And then finally, to make a cylinder, I will call this a cylinder instead of a box. It has two size parameters. One is the radius, which I'll call 0 0.01, and half length, which is 0 0.5. And I'll change the color to yellow. Now I can simply click on reload and I see that I have the cylinder. When working with a pendulum, we need to look at frames. There are two frames which are important. First is the geometric frame. This one is defined at the center of the geometry. We cannot move this frame. The second frame is the body frame. This frame is normally at the geometric frame, but we can move it. In fact, we will move it to the position at the top of the pendulum and then use that frame in order to specify the pin joint as well as the center of mass. Let's see how to do this. First, let's visualize the geometric frame. In order to do that, open rendering. In frame, choose geometric frame. As you can see, it's in the middle. Next, we'll open up the body frame and you can see it's overlaid on the geometric frame. Our next goal is to move the body frame upwards. In order to do that, we see that the body frame needs to move a distance of 0.5 along the z-axis. In order to do that, what we do here is in the geometry, we specify position to be the negative of that position. So in this case, it would be 0, 0, minus 0.5 because we just figured out it has to move in the upward direction, which is positive. We save this and reload the scene. As you can see, the body frame is now the top of the pendulum. Next, we add a pin joint to the pendulum. We'll specify the pin joint to be along the y-axis as shown here. We'll use the body frame location in order to set the pin joint. So the pin joint is specified with a tag called joint. We specify a type. Here it is a hinge joint. You need to specify an axis. So it will be y along the y-axis. And then we need to specify position. Now the position of the pin joint is going to be right at the body frame. So it will be 0, 0, 0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the body frame and turn on the joint and say reload. And you can see that the pin joint is right at the top. Okay. Now to check this uh, logic that this really puts the pin joint at the top, what we could do is we could specify the pin joint to be at a distance of negative 0.5 along the z-axis. So for that, we move it 0.5. So this would have the effect of moving it down because the positive axis for the body frame is upwards. And you see it's gone down. Let's revert back and reload. The last step is to specify the center of mass and you want to specify the middle of the pendulum. Let's first see how we can visualize the center of mass. If you click on in rendering center of mass, you should see the center of mass. Here the center of mass is at the middle. This is because by default the geometry type 
assumes that the center of mass is going to be the centroid or at the geometric center of the object. We can specify the mass by specifying the inertial tag. We specify a mass, let's say one unit. Uh, we specify the inertia, let's call it the diag inertia. We talk about the diag inertia later on. And then we need to specify a position for the center of mass. Let's just specify zero, zero, zero. Now, always remember that the center of mass is specified with respect to the body frame. In this case, a body frame is on top. So this mass now will move to the top. So it moved to the top because that's how we specified it. Now, if we really want to move it down, which is over here, uh, remember that the body frame axis is pointing upwards. So here we want to move it 0.5 meters along the negative Z axis. So we go here and say minus 0.5 and then we do a reload. And you can see that the center of mass is moved down. If you want to move it further down, you just specify 0, 0, minus 1. The last step here is to move the pendulum at a specific angle and let it go so that it can oscillate like a pendulum. For this, what we'll do is we'll use keyframes. So just outside world body, we specified the tag keyframe. And then uh, the closure. Next, we specify the key, and you could give it a name if you want, but here we are interested in tempering with the position or the angle. So we specify a position of 0.5, that is the pendulum is moved by 0.5 radians and let go. Close the tag. We go back, we reload, and I'm going to remove some of the clutter here. I'm going to remove the axis. I'm going to remove the center of mass. And in order to load the key, I just press load key. Now in this case, the pendulum is not oscillating because the gravity is turned off. So we go back here and turn on gravity, 9.81. We reload the XML file, press load key, and we can see that the pendulum is actually oscillating 